Right, let's get a can of drink. I've got a Hater 41 to do today. Oh, hello, look, what's going on here? Mrs. P and Riley Boy in the hot tub. Oh, Riley's turned the bubbles off. <laughs> do, you want, do you want the bubbles on, Mrs. P, or bubbles off, Mrs. P? On. On. Put the bubbles on, Riley. Why are you recording? Because I am, I'm going to I'm going to fix one. Turn the bubbles on, buddy. Mrs. P doesn't really sat there with all her bubbles hanging out. Are you, are you, are you eh? Come with me, I uh, yeah, come, yeah, once you've been in the hot tub, you can, yeah. So there's Mrs. P, relaxing. Mrs. P, you're looking very row today. Daddy. Yeah, Riley. What one more thing? Oh, fantastic. So Mrs. P, she's in the hot tub. Oh, my Lord. I'll be going there later on myself. There's Nana's pants on a washing line. Right, so, um... I want to look at this lawnmower today. This is that Hater 41 that I picked up just the other day, do you remember? Um, and it's got a bit of a bouncy front. Let me get the tripod set up and I'll come back to you and show you exactly what it is doing. Okay, so this little mount, um, little um, Hater 41, it runs and hunts and surges. That's what it does do. This one I picked up from over at Hookway from, I think her name was Lucy, I think, I can't remember now. Um, so it all runs. But it hunts and surges. So that's what we sorted out. But more importantly, it does this. It's got this bouncy front business going on. And it will never ever sell if it does that. So if your lawnmower is doing that, I'll show you how to fix that. So um, I'll get you a bit closer so you can actually see what it's actually doing. And uh, we'll go from there. Let me just bring it in just a tad closer. I'll put you down here somewhere. I'll put you just down here. It's just got a bit of a bounce to it. See that? So let's get that sorted out. Into the shed, up on the bench, get it fixed. Okay, so up on the bench, and as you can see, it's, it's, just, got this, it's just got this hideous bounce to it. See that bounce? And that'll make your grass really wavy too. So that ain't no good for nothing. So HT lead off. Um, and there is oil in this machine, but I'm not overly concerned because it's going to have a full service once I've done it. Um, so I can tip it up onto its side with, with every confidence knowing that all the fuel and all the oil is going to come out of here and I'm not, I'm not concerned, okay? You shouldn't do it if you're not going to take all the oil out, right? But as I am, then I'm not overly bothered about it. So, right. First things first, is I'm going to need to remove um, the blade. Now, it has got other faults as well, this machine. It's got a fault on the, on the cowl, and that all's loose fell. I need to sort that out. I know what's going on with that yet, but we, we can figure that out. I might just be missing some screws. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, so I want to remove the front bolt um, off of the uh, off of a blade. What is that? Maybe about a 14, I guess. So I've got a fan in the background going, guys. You might get a bit, a bit of noise coming off of that, but uh, it is absolutely red hot in the old shed today. So undo that um, that bolt. Oh, that comes off. Put that to one side, and then remove the friction disc. That comes off. Now I would like to try and remove this half cowling first. It's pretty much all hanging off as it is. Let's just get in there. I think there's a little tiny uh, Phillips Schofield screwdriver in there. Uh, if I'm a Phillips, so it's, I think it's a Phillips in there. Now these little um, uh, lawnmowers, they're actually fiberglass with a little aluminium skeleton on them. So I'm just gonna remove that screw, take that out, and then that should give me this part of the deck. There it is there. Now, the only reason that this has got a bouncy front, right, let me bring it in so you can see a bit better. These are really, really simple fix, so easy. So this little tiny bar here, that lives on that little tiny height adjustment roller bracket stud just there. That is the only reason why they, why they break like that. And all it is, is because the angle badangle uh, is not quite right. And um, 
they just slip, they, they just slip the, the circlip or whatever you put on there, they, they just push off over time and that's the reason why your bouncy front lawnmower uh, comes off. So all you've got to do is just manhandle that onto there. Now sometimes you might have to remove the, um, the spring to do it, other times you can get around it just by forcing it on. We'll see how we get on, hopefully we'll just force it on there. If we put a new circlip on and that'll be the height adjustment fixed. So if your Hater 41's got a bouncy front, that be the reason. So we've got to do is undo one screw here, one screw here, which mine are broke, one screw here. That removes that side of the cowling. Take the blade and disc off and put that back on to there. Simples. Right, so let's try and get that put on there. Now, I might be able to do it just for height control. Let's we'll see how we get on. I've got to move these wheels. These are all, these are all under tension, you see. That's, that's, that's the, biggest, the biggest problem. These are all under tension. And you have to try and manipulate these um, these wheels um, out outwards so that you can then get hold of that uh, that their tension pull because it's not it's not a lot literally it is about four or five mil it's not a lot and once it's in place uh, it's in place so I give it a little toffee hammer so it's on it's just rested on me now I know I make conquer. He had one of these, and he's oh, he said they're an absolute pig to do, absolute pig, and they are one of the easiest fixes I know on these little tiny um, little spirits. They just just pull it on like that. Now just find yourself a little nice little circlip, one that fits, right? Don't go skimping out. Now what I would say to you is, it's too small. Is um, if you're going to put them on here, put two or three on here. Put two or three on. So that you know it's in place. Let me find my other, I've got some um, some black ones somewhere, and they are my, my best ones. Let me find my little black circuit. So I'll back to you in two seconds. All right, I'm back. Found my black ones. Uh, right, here we go. So let's just find these. If these are like a star clip, these are much better. So they're perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to muck about. Right, I'm going to put two or three of them on there, just because it's a, it's a really really common problem. Now find yourself a little socket that just about fits over the top of that stud. See how it fits on there? Find yourself a nice little tiny socket that fits over top, and then get your circlip and rest your circlip or, or your, your star clip on top of that. Get your little tiny toffee hammer, rest it up like that, and then give it a tap. Right? And you'll find that to go up. Right, that's on there. That's that one. I'm going to put another one behind it, just so I know it ain't never coming off. There's two. Two circuits on there now. So now, by rights, so I could tip this lawnmower back up onto its, onto its wheels again and roll that, and I know that, that that fault is actually fixed. However, I've got a few more faults with this. I've got a little tiny screw here to come out because my deck here has got a split in it. Uh, yeah, this one here, that's got a split in there. So I need to figure out how to fix that deck first before I can move this mower on, or I'll just buy this new, buy this piece, which is probably not gonna be a bad thing, actually. I might just buy, buy a second-hand piece of these. In fact, I've got one, I think, on a donor mower that my mate, Mr. Frau, gave me, which I could probably use. So let me have a look to see if I can't use the one off of a donor machine that I get this one up and running, as it should do and then I can uh, get this one out of the way and done with and then just buy myself another 41 half deck uh, second hand piece to, uh, to work on that. So let me get these unscrewed because I think that is the only reason apart from the height control she didn't know about why she sold this machine on. So let me look at Pete's machine, the one that he gave me, see if that deck's any better and if it is I'll swap the deck over very quickly and uh, we go from there. Right, so all I have to do is just, there's a bit of plastic uh, knocked in there, uh, up underneath. So all I've done now, let me just show you that. I don't, I'm rather just pointing at it, I'd rather show you guys and girls. So there's a bit of plastic that's snapped off up inside here. So it's just, just, just drilled it out by about three or four mil, so that this lug here, you know, there, will then go up into, into there and receive that. That one's all right, so yeah, we're good to go there. So the little mower that my mate Pete Frow gave me, um, he couldn't be bothered to fix it himself. He had no time, he was busy. Um, he said, take that one away. You can have that, he said. And um, I did. 
So now, hopefully, I've got uh, a mower here, uh, which I can use as, as donor parts and um, get this machine up and ready. So it's not a power drive, which is a shame. Shame it's not a power drive one, but uh, you can't you can't have it all. That's because we're all the way up in there now, all the way up in there, and that should bite all the way up into there. And then um, I've got the second screw to put in up the top, which would be this one here. That can go all the way up into there. Squeeze it all together. Once one takes, it, it'll hold it all. Hold it all in place. That, that Fulton's going to bite first. Yeah, that's going to bite first. Get it all bitten down. And it starts to hold it in place. So it just wants to be tightened up. I might do the same with that or not, we should see. No, that will go. I don't what you don't want to do is go is go too hard on these. You go too hard on them, it just splits them. And they're about 25 pounds for a new cowling, so you don't go too too boisterous. So once it's bitten down, nearly there. That's it. Yeah. Um that's about right there. That's good. So it's got that, that last one to do here, and I've got this one here to do here, so we're pretty much there. Let's put that one in just to hold it all in place. I'll sharpen the old blade up. Now what I will do, I'm gonna do a quick little carburetor swap on this because it's hunting and surging. Now I was able to find, for these little tiny Briggs, um, um, these little Briggs carbies, I was able to find a supplier on Amazon which sells these carbs for about 18 pound, right? And um, I tell you, um, they are, quite good now I've seen some copies before and they're they're actually quite shocking nearly there it's not too mad that snaps I've had it um, I've seen some copies and they're absolutely shocking uh, but for these ones I've picked up they're pretty good right that's on um, let me look at a blade yeah blade wants sharpened and balancing let me get that sharpened up I'll grab the other carb and I'll come back to you once I've done that Right, so got my blade all done. Um, that's all been uh, sharp and balanced up, looking rather spliffing, nice new edge, and on the back edge as well, both sides of course. Spared no expense here, you know. Um, and get my bolt, put that through there. Just offer that up to the old, the old boss first of all. Once it's been offered, you can then just locate your, your friction disc in both holes, two holes. Just nick it up. Don't forget the HT is actually off on this machine. Just going to run that to it. Just so it bites it, so it's got it. And grab me impact. Turn the setting down on speed. Don't go too mad. Put that on there. Uh, other way, mate. Only fingers. That's on. Good. So uh, friction disc is on. Blades on. That's been sharp and balanced up. We've also done the uh, the fix of the reason why it was either sold or uh, broken in the first place. That's a bouncy front. So now, if I just move you guys and girls back just a smidge, just a smidge, oh, not too much. I can then tip this back up onto its wheels and roller, and you'll see, as if by magic, the bouncy front is no longer bouncing like it was and now it do as it's told they go higher lower and that bouncing does it a bit there but that's just normal but it doesn't go down like it used to so there you go that's how you cure your bouncy bouncy but the next thing i want to do now is um this lawnmower was hunting and surging was it not and i believe it'd be hunting and surging because the carburetor on these are not that good um, but a new, oh my lord, a new genuine uh, Briggs and Stratton carburetor for one of these is here in the UK around about um, 50 quid. 40 odd quid they are now, I've seen them. 45, 48, 52s, I've seen all over. And you know what, I just, I can't, I can't condone paying that sort of money for a carburetor when they make copies in the same country where the genuines are made it just it's just false economy um, now just remember the fine thread screws on here we've got eights and sevens 
the fine thread screws go on the outsides, on the metal side. They're the fine thread ones. Um, they'll be your, your eights. Your eights, your eights, your eights, your eights. So left and right for your, clock that, for your fine threads. And then for your coarse threads, which go into plastic, is that one there and one just below it. So you've got a fine thread, make sure your fine thread goes into metal. Let me find another screw before I go nuts. So it's, that's it. I see it. I'm going to be losing that. Um, whip that off. That comes off like that. Um, now you want to get a pair of pliers and you'll remove the fuel uh, hose clamp with a pair of pliers. And I've got a pair of these. These are just proper fuel clamp pliers, right? Stick that on, clamp it, put it back, and then put it on there. And now get a pair of pliers in there and just boisterously remove that clamp, uh, that, that fuel hose off of the side of a carby. It's a very, very short hose, so you haven't got a lot of room. Oh, once that's done, you can then leave, move your carb out, tip up and round, and off comes your carby, right? Now I will keep that carburetor uh, for another day, right? But I'm not gonna muck about with that. So I picked up off of Amazonium, a really, really cheap copy carburetor. All right, and it was cheap too. It was cheap. And in the kit, you get your carby. You get your carby, cut the rings, and you're good to go. So, just put your, um, put your, your new rubber seal on the front of your carb. Uh, it's gonna go that way. And just a bit of, bit of jiggery poke, we just put that in there. Just run it round, there you go. All right, put that in place like that. So there's, there's your carburetor seal there. That's that, that's good. Uh, and they also give you this one here, which I'm assuming, I don't rightly know, goes in the back of there. But we've already got one in there already. I can see it from here. I think it's in there, your little black one here. And what some people do, they actually put that ring on the back of there. But it don't belong on there, because it don't sit right. So, um, you get a spare one for in there. So we can now hook up this carby, twist it on, fire it up into there, into its position. It just sits in place, boom. Then grab your your pliers, grab hold of your fuel hose, and you've got, you've got to sort of manhandle it, because there are very, very short fuel hoses on here. So you've got to sort of manhandle it a bit. Now what normally happens is you push this fuel hose on, and then the little tiny white bit comes off your carby. That's gone on, which mine has. So push, just push that one into place. Hold that down. There it goes, that's gone in. Right, that's now in, carburet is now in place. Remove the fuel clamps, and put the uh, fuel hose back in place where it belongs. Done. So I'm moving a bit fast for you guys, but they are, they are quite quite straightforward. These little tiny uh, little tiny carbies, and there's not a lot to them. Quick little clean off on there, make sure there's nothing foreign matter in there, and put your finger around the back here. Keep hold of your your um, crankcase breather, and that goes onto there. So you just put your finger behind, put it into place, and hold it in place as you fit the air box on. That's gone on. Keep it there. If you don't, it falls off. Just before, just before we seat it, just make sure that, that crankcase breather pipe is on, which mine is. We can then grab our screws. Remember what I said, plastic is for the inner side and your, your fine threads is for left and right. So we'll go coarse threads first. That goes into plastic, into the carburetor itself. Just loosey-goosey for now. That's up the top down the bottom, change socket, and we're gonna put the fine threads in left and right. Zip them down and just change socket again just to run the little plastic ones in. Uh, that on there. One, two, done. So I've got to find a new air filter for that. That'd be my draw. Bit of a wipe down. Uh, I've got to take the oil out and drain the oil. 
but I'll probably do that once I run a machine up because um, I'll take it all out when it's nice and warm. So I'll meet you outside in two seconds. Hopefully now we've cured the bouncy front, problem number one, cured the hunting and surgeon issue number two, and this lawnmower now should be good as gold. So it's had uh, all change, new spark plug, new carburetor, the bouncing problem sorted, which is now gone, Doesn't, no longer bounces. Um, it does need a new air filter. The air filter, um, I don't have no new ones in stock, so I've got to buy a new one of those. Uh, but apart from that, it's it's all good. So, let's put the bag on it. <coughs> so we should be good to go. So let's just fire it up. Any petrol in there, Mick? Yeah. And let's see what it does. Hopefully now it doesn't hunt and surge, because it was before it. And it's got the cheap cheap carb in there, a copy one. And it pumps. Let's see what it does now. Hopefully no hunting and surging. Oh. An 18 pound carburetor stopped this machine from hunting and surging, and the uh, a new little tiny um, circlip split pin, if you like, a little uh, circlip on there, has just fixed the height uh, control issue that it had. And now it all runs and starts. Absolutely beautifully. So there you go, one bouncy um, Hater 41 uh, is no longer bouncing. Uh, the little tiny bar just comes off because of the, the, the spring clip on there. Just force it back on there and then put a couple back on, make sure a good, nice, tight fit, you're good to go. Have it designed with a little tiny groove in there. The um, split pin or the, uh, the circlip uh, would not have slipped, but uh, that's just the way the design is. But so many people have seen those, throw those machines away because of a bouncy front on them. And uh, yeah, simple. It's also had a, a second-hand cowling put on there because the cowling was all snapped and that's the original reason why I picked the machine up in the first place. But now it all runs thanks to a nice 18 pound donor part um, carburetor copy from Amazon uh, instead of 54 pounds. So yeah, super, super happy. The machine stops, starts, runs exactly as it should do. I'm super happy with that. If it's your first time watching Mixed Mars and Mars Man, hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell, set the notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I've got another video. I look forward to the episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, guys and girls, much more importantly, Take it easy.